Okay, so starting again, today I want to consider some generalizations of the resetting problem and in particular to some optimization problems that we have partial results for, but I think merit further study. And uh, I want to first of all just discuss some ways of generalizing resetting. So one obvious way is so far we've discussed resetting to a particular initial condition. And instead, one could consider resetting to a distribution of positions. Now, the other thing is, we, in, so far, we considered absorption by a target. And um, we calculated the mean time to absorption, knowing where the target was in relation to our resetting position. So, does, so, so kind of knowing how wrong we were in our estimate of where the target was. But it may be that you don't know where the target is. So you might want to consider the target itself being selected from a distribution of positions and then um, consider the average over that, over that distribution for um, absorption times. So these are two natural generalizations and these two are relatively simple to do. Although I warn you that somehow the equations start to look long, although it's, it's a very simple generalization of what we've already done. It's nothing more difficult than we've already done. Okay, so the things we can consider. So um, we're going to, this is 3a. Uh, so I'm going to consider resetting. And so a resetting distribution and a target distribution. So on resetting, Let's say the position x is changed to xr. And xr is a random variable. So we're going to stay in, in one dimension. So it's going to be a random position, so a random variable drawn from some distribution. And I'll call the distribution. So this is my attempt at a calligraphic p. But just to make it clear, I'll put a subscript pr. And so that's our resetting distribution. Sorry, this is my R here. And for simplicity, let's also consider the initial condition, so our x naught, as also being drawn from a distribution. And let's make it the same distribution. That just makes life a little bit simpler. So for simplicity, um, we choose the distribution for the initial condition x naught as the same distribution. Right. As I've said, knowing exactly where the absorbing target is is perhaps artificial. So let's say that um, the target position is drawn from, and here is meant to be capital P subscript T. I guess here the important thing is the subscript. So hopefully the T is distinguishable from the R. So the target position, which I'll call xt is drawn from distribution pt xt. OK, so we introduce these two distributions. And so what I want to do now is simply average the renewal equation that we derived, wrote down really, in the first lecture to um, want to average that over these two distributions and then see what we get. So it will all actually end up quite simple. So let's just recall which came from lecture one and when I was, uh, excuse me, one and when I was labeling the equations, it was equation 11. So the renewal occasion, so let's put in with the um, absorbing t 
target at xt. So I'll put that in, and um, yeah. And I want to, and um, include, and now, excuse me, with a resetting distribution So that's the, the first thing. So my probability of the particle still being alive, probability distribution at being alive at x at time t. And now the, it's conditioned on, well, there's two parameters, the initial position, x0, which I'm going to average over in a moment, and the target position. So let me put. Just remind ourselves we've got a fixed initial position and target position. And we'll, as I said, average over those in a moment. Um, so we can have trajectories that, where there's no resetting that we get from the initial position to xt. So remember the probability for no resetting is minus r times t. And then it would, what I call the Green's function will just be the, diffuse, the solution of the diffusive problem, but with an absorbing boundary at the target. So I'll write that as GD um, XT uh, given X naught XP. OK. So there are trajectories where there's no resetting. And then I've got cases where there's some resetting. So I integrate over the time. So t prime is the last reset. And so then there's no resets between t prime and t. So I get e to the minus r t minus t prime. And then I. Uh, OK, so now when I have reset at time t primed, I go to some position xr drawn from this. So I need to then integrate over xr p r xr. And then um, I'm going from xr to xt, so I'll get a g d x r comma t minus t prime and that um, excuse me x given x r and we've got x target and then times at that time t primed the particle must have survived so it's all times the survival probability q um, so this is the total survival probability so it's Q of t given uh, we started at x0, and uh, we've got resetting, uh, sorry, target t. Right. So I made a bit of a meal of that. But you see, it's the same equation that we had before. The only, thing I, the only new thing I've put in is, is here, OK, this resetting distribution. Right. Um, now. OK, if you're happy with that, it's actually a simple matter now to integrate So firstly, um, I want to integrate over x0. OK, the initial condition with distribution I'm choosing this p r, the same distribution as the resetting distribution for x naught, and also I want to integrate over x to get the survival probability. So I'm doing two steps here, and hopefully it'll be clear enough. And when I do that, 
okay, this will become what I'll call, call Q T. Okay, then I've integrated over X naught, so this be um, X T. This one will be e to the minus R T. And when I integrate this over X and X naught, let me call that Q diffusive survival probability. Then I'm just copying down this. OK, so that's good. So here, in fact, um, I'm just going to integrate over x. And I've already defined this when I've integrated over x and x0, which is what I'm doing here. That I've defined already as qd. And now it's t minus t primed. And finally, this guy, when I integrate over x0, is simply q. OK, so it actually, so just to check here, it all simplified. And it's just the way I defined things. So just to, so this is the survival probability um, when I've integrated over a distribution of uh, initial conditions. And I integrate over all the final positions. That's the total survival probability. And QD is now um, of, uh, and sorry, just bear with me. So integrate over x, final position, x not in initial position with this distribution. And then it's um, g d x t. OK? But anyway, this equation is basically the same structure as we had last time. So I can solve it in the same way by Laplace transform. So if I solve this by Laplace transform, and what I get, so the Laplace transform is Q tilde SXT. Okay, just to remind you, just simply to go from 0 to infinity dt, e to the minus st, qt. And what I get is that q tilde is the Laplace transform of, of this, which we know in principle, but um, with argument s plus r over 1 minus r okay so that's the main result and it's just the same structure as what we had uh, previously actually we can simplify this a bit by using the form that we know for this um, the Laplace transform of the diffusive survival probability, because remember, we know what that is, uh, and we know what this Laplace transform is. And so, in fact, OK. Let's go here. So we saw. Where have we gone? This here is actually, sorry, the Laplace transform of this is, um, excuse me, I should have had a zero there, is.
Okay. And then basically, I'm Laplace transforming this integrated over x, and, and I know what that expression is. We saw it before. It's 1 minus e to the minus alpha naught. It's not. Sorry, I'm hoping this isn't, doesn't seem too complicated. We're actually just using all the previous results, and it's just really a job of transcribing them. Just things start to um, look a little bit complicated, but um, the general structure is simple. Okay, and this becomes, of course, 1 over r. To put the bracket there. And then minus 1 over r integral dx naught dr x naught. Right? So actually, then I can simply insert this expression into here. And what you'll see what happens is this denominator is going to simplify somewhat. So on the, the denominator, I just end up actually with this integral, more or less. And the numerator, I have 1 minus that integral. So I get a cancellation. And in fact, this simplifies down to, yeah, OK, let, let me not simplify q. Sorry. Let, so I'm going to use that in a moment to simplify the mean time to absorption. So Remember, mean time to absorption we get simply by setting s equals 0. So it's t. Remember, our target is at xt. So this is simply q tilde s equals 0. And just. Uh, Putting in s equals 0, I get r then using this expression. Actually, I was going to label some expressions, and now I realize I haven't done it. So, th so this equation, let me label equation 1. And this equation here that we get by integrating, I'll call 2. This result is 3. So setting s equals 0 and 3, I get that. And then using this explicit expression, for this, I end up with 1 over r So all I've done is, OK, you agree with, hopefully, with this result. I just put s equals 0 and then inserted the explicit expression for the Laplace transform of this. OK, hopefully, are you with me so far? I see everybody scribbling. Hopefully, I'm not writing too fast. Now, the interesting thing is that this quantity on the bottom we can actually relate to the stationary distribution in the absence of the absorbing target. So remember, the stationary distribution without an absorbing target this will be given by p star um, okay and of x will simply be the integral over 
resetting position. And then the stationary distribution for x given the resetting position that we derived previously. And if you remember, this p star was that um, Laplace distribution, so the exponentially decaying distribution. So this is, in fact, um, alpha naught over 2. And then we've got e to the minus alpha naught x minus xr. And that's um, using, from the first lecture, equation 9. And let me label, for today's lecture, let me label this number 5. OK. Although I already lost, this was meant to be equation 4. OK, so why did I tell you that? Because then I can simply relate this bit here to the stationary distribution. So in fact, um, so, yeah, so in fact the, the mean absorption time with the target at xt is 1 over r alpha naught over 2. Then it's p star. So the probability in the absence of the absorbing target, um, the probability evalu distribution evaluated at the target site. So that, in the end, becomes quite a simple result. And the final thing I want to do, yeah, one thing I forgot to say. Um, of course, alpha naught we previously defined. That's r over d to the half. So finally, let's average over the target site distribution. So I'll call that, I'll denote that average by a, a bar. So T bar, the mean time to absorption, averaged over the target distribution will be um, 1 over R integral dxt, target distribution pxt, and then alpha naught over 2. And that's what I'm going to call equation 6. So hopefully, right, that's the, the hard work done. It's all actually very simple. I didn't do anything complicated. It just writing out the expressions is a bit tedious. But so finally, now I've got um, yeah, the, this mean time to absorption averaged over the target distribution. And the question I want to think about is, um, OK, so let's say given the target distribution, how do we optimize this? So how do we um, minimize the time to absorption? Given, let, let's say the target dis distribution is fixed. That's all the information we have about the target. Um, how do we minimize this? And what you see is that, well, what appears there is this p star. So we minimize it by trying to adjust the stationary distribution that we get by playing around with our resetting um, distribution here. So that's the question I want to, to ask, like how to minimize the mean time to absorption by playing around with the resetting distribution. So as I just said, we want to try to 
extremize T bar um, for a given target distribution. And what I'm going to make some sort of harmless or reasonable assumptions. So I'm going to assume that PT is symmetric about zero. OK? So usually, we would assume that the most likely position for the target is at the origin. And it's a symmetric distribution about the origin. So what we have to do, if I look at this, well, this bit here, the minus one is just going to give me a constant. Uh, alpha naught's a constant. So what it boils down to is trying to minimize the following integral. So we want to minimize integral with respect to the target position, pt xt over p star xt. Now, p star, where did it go? Here it is here, equation 5, in terms of the resetting distribution. Now, also, I've got another constraint. So it's, it's, I'm minimizing something. And this is a, a functional of, if I go back, it's a functional of, of this resetting distribution. But also, I have the constraint that this should be positive, right? Or non-negative, anyway. It should be non-negative. And that puts an additional constraint in there. And finally, I have the constraint that this should be normalized to 1. So this is an extremization subject to constraints. Now, the constraint that this P of R should be normalized, that I can handle, and I know how to do that. The constraint that it should be non-negative, hmm, I don't know how to do. So I'm, what I'm going to do is forget that constraint and just keep the constraint that it's normalized and then see what I get and see if it is non-negative or, or not. So what I want to do, and hopefully uh, this notation, I, I want to make the, um, what in physics we call the functional derivative, so I guess variational derivative. So by varying the function PR, um, I want to see that the change in this integral, let me I, I can drop the t here, because it's, it's obvious I'm, well, no, actually, let me keep it just to be clear. Uh, OK, that's what I want to minimize. And then my constraint I put in with a Lagrange multiplier. So lambda is the Lagrange multiplier. Integral dx p r x. I want the, the variational derivative of that to be 0. And so this gives me Euler-Lagrange equation, if you like. Which comes out when I do this derivative, I will end up with so, um, so PT, remember, is fixed. So I'm taking the derivative of this part here. And I end up with and let me now, because um, the, the thing that solves this equation will be the optimal P star. So let me call that P opt, P opt star squared. And I have also, I end up with minus alpha naught xr minus xt. OK? 
because um, P star is given by this. That's, uh, where did we go? This, that's what I mean. So when I take the variation, variation of derivative with respect to, to this function, I get that factor there. Then this one here is uh, easy. Okay, and I will get, actually there's a, there's a factor alpha um, not over two that I've managed to, yeah. So that should be minus and then plus lambda equals zero. Right, so that's just the Euler-Lagrange equation coming from this extremization problem. And actually, okay, so this doesn't look too promising because we've got an integral there. But remember, this must hold, for if, if it's the optimal P star, this should hold for all r. And then imposing, sorry, for all xr. And imposing that condition, then you're led to a simple solution. So the fact that this holds for all xr, in fact, implies that this must be equal to lambda. So that's actually quite easy to work out. I'll, I'll leave that as an exercise. And then finally, so I've got this. If I invert this to get my optimal P star in terms of PT, I get PT to the half of X over lambda to the half. And then the lambda is the Lagrange multiplier, and I just fix that by imposing that um, this is normalized. Or alternatively, this is normalized. Okay. And I end up with So that's my result. That the so just to recap what we've done, the optimal stationary distribution without the absorbing target, which would extremize the mean time to absorption, is given by this. And the interesting thing, you see it's related to the target distribution but it's narrower. So this is slightly counterintuitive. You want to create a stationary distribution that is the square root of the target distribution, and that's the one that optimizes or minimizes the mean um, absorption time. And the problem is that, OK, that's fine, but we may not be able to achieve that by resetting. We've got that. That's the optional. That would be the optimal uh, stationary distribution. But remember, we were using resetting to get a stationary distribution. And the question is, like, can you achieve that by resetting? And that's a different question. That You, know, you may not be able to achieve that. So let's just do um, an example. So the, OK, so that's the thing to note there, that the, P, the optimal P star is, in fact, narrower because it's a square root it's narrower than the target distribution. All right, so one can go further. Um, so we've got this equation here for P star. So this could be P optimal star. Um, in terms of PR. So basically, we want to invert this to try and get PR in terms of P star. And you can actually solve this equation. 
I'll just give you the solution. So the solution of, of this equation for PR is minus so it's actually a relatively simple solution and you can check it by you know you can actually if you don't believe it you can just put this in here and you do a few integrations by parts and you'll find that yes that is the solution so what I want to sh show is that Okay, that sounds fine, that we know, we know the optimal P star, so then we should just put it in here to work out what the resetting distribution should be. But sometimes you'll find that that gives something unrealizable, or it gives something un, what I would call unphysical. Or maybe you'd say unmathematical, I don't know. But it would give a negative PR, and that's um, no good. So also we need um, so let me I think I just about have enough room so let's do an example of this to uh, see what happens yeah Let me take an exponential target distribution. So remember we said the target distribution will center it on the origin and have it symmetric. So a simple choice is to make this the, a double exponential decay. Right? So this simply looks like this. And if um, beta is small, this is a broad distribution. So don't, know, have some, don't have so much information about the target. And if it, beta goes to infinity, that becomes a delta function at the origin. So if uh, beta is small, it's broad. Beta goes to infinity the target distribution will go to a delta function. So you can check that already there's some non-trivial things happen. So if I simply put, um, if I use this target distribution in the case of resetting to a single point. So just, if I chose to reset to the origin, but I had this target distribution, right? So I'm, I'm, it's a diffusive particle. The target is somewhere around the origin, according to that distribution. What we're doing is diff it's diffusing and then resetting. But what you find is that if this distribution is too broad, the mean time to absorption will diverge. And that's easy enough to see. So if this is delta xr, mta will go to infinity if beta is less than alpha naught. So if, if this distribution becomes too broad, then it will diverge. So to do better, we would want to find our some Let's say, try and find the optimal distribution, which is given, OK, by this. Then putting this in here, that will give our PR. So if we work that out, equation 7, this one here, gives the um, 
the optimal stationary distribution. is, again, a, an exponential, but narrower, right? right that's just, it's just the square root. So we want to ask, can we achieve this by resetting? So then if I put this into here, then I'll get the desired resetting distribution. And so 8, and hopefully I can just fit this in will give me that the optimal resetting distribution, if I work it out, I get the following expression, beta over 4, e to the minus beta magnitude of xr over 2, then 1 minus beta squared over 4 alpha naught squared. Hmm. So this is interesting. That's just what comes out if I, if I put this in here. And what I see is I've got a continuous piece that's an exponential, but it's got a coefficient. And at some point, this coefficient becomes negative. And so then this is no longer a realizable, well, I can't have a, you know, a negative distribution, so then it's no good. And all the time, I've got a, a delta piece here. So um, yeah, let me, I'm sorry, let me just borrow a little bit of space. Hopefully, this is all up there. OK, so I'm continuing this problem over here. If I actually sketch. this optimal distribution. It looks like something like this with a delta function at the origin. And this is when this part is positive. So this is when beta squared, beta is greater than 2 alpha naught. Um, but then when yes, you're quite correct. If I've got that right, um, yes. When beta is less, that's good. No, you're, you're absolutely right. So when remember when it's small, it's a broad distribution. Yeah. So when the target distribution is broad, this is, in fact, the optimal resetting distribution. But when the target distribution becomes narrower, at some point, this becomes a delta function. Well, and the, what would be the optimal distribution is negative, so that's no good. So there's a transition from this distribution. And what we would conjecture is that the, in the case where beta is greater than 2 alpha naught, the optimal distribution is, in fact, just a delta function. That would seem natural. And what one, so when, when beta is less than 2 alpha naught, we get a transition. And what we would conjecture is that the reset, sorry, uh, yeah, a resetting distribution which is just a delta function, is the optimal distribution. Now, what we can show is that this is locally optimal, by which I mean that if, if I look at small variations around the delta function, they will all lead to an increased um, mean absorption time. But this doesn't satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation, so it's not an extremum. It's, it's, it's only an extremum because of the constraint that the distribution has to be non-negative. So I, you know, we, we, would, we believe this, but it's, we haven't proven that it's the global optimum. Right? That, maybe that wasn't clear there. <laughs> Thank you.
So just, just to try and say that again, what the Euler-Lagrange equations show that the global optimum would be when p star is given by, by this. There's no argument there. However, this p star implies a pr, and at some point it implies a pr that is negative. So although this would be optimal, you can't achieve this by resetting. So then you ask, what's the best you can do by resetting? And the reason that this becomes no good is because it violates a constraint that it should be non-negative. So you would guess that the optimal solution subject to that constraint would be on the, the boundary where it becomes 0. And that's essentially what's, what's happening here. We've got a delta function and, and 0 everywhere else. And we would conjecture that that is the global solution, global optimum. OK. Uh, uh, <laughs> I won't uh, flog the dead horse anymore. So in the second half, I'd like to discuss another generalization um, of the resetting problem. So let me clean the boards there. OK. So in the second half of this lecture, I want to discuss another generalization. And um, well, many of the simple properties of resetting arose because the resetting was a Poisson process. That you know, wherever the, the, the process was, um, it reset with the same rate. And there's ways that we can change that. You could either consider, so the resetting rate was just r, a constant. So you need to make r a function of position, which causes its own difficulties. Or you can make it a function of, of time, which again causes a, leads to another set of um, questions and problems. And what I'll mainly, oops, and what remains, I'll consider the case where r of t, the resetting rate, is time dependent. So it evolves in time. So what I'm saying, I just discuss R, the resetting rate, to be time dependent. So I can choose whatever function I want. And then if I think about it, um, 
it's natural to let r actually be a function of t minus tl, where l is the time of the last resetting event, right? Um, so rather than being a function of absolute time, r is just a, a, a function of the time since the last reset. That's a, a natural thing to do. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep track of the absolute time and then the times of all the previous resets. We just make it only a function of the time since the last reset. So TL here is the time of the last reset. So then it's a simple exercise to work out that the probability density for um, no resets, well actually it's just the probability, excuse me, probability for no resets up to time t is given by exponential of the minus the integral from 0 to t uh, r tor d tor. OK, so we're assuming that um, we think of the initial condition as there was a reset there. So then r starts to depend on time since um, the start of the whole thing. And uh, OK, that, that's the probability that there's no resetting. So just to check, for a Poisson process, if r is constant, this is minus rt. Okay, so you get the usual result. And then that means that the, um, the probability that the next reset, or that, excuse me, the, the first reset in t to t plus dt is actually minus d by dt of this. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to call that e to the minus. This integral will appear a lot, so I'll call it e to the big R t. So the probability density for the first reset is going to be minus d by dt of that. Yeah, that looks terribly messy. Excuse me. OK, hopefully that's clear. Um, so we have our reasons for formulating things in this way in terms of a time-dependent resetting. We'll see at the end why. It's convenient for us. Um, more generally, the approaches to this kind of problem is to just um, give this distribution. And you know, so for, for a continuous time random walk, the idea, or for a continuous time process, the idea is to give the distribution of times to the next event. So another way of formulating this would just be to say, this is the distribution, no, some function here, propose the distribution of times to the next resetting event. We could formulate it that way. We chose to do it in terms of um, a, a rate, which then that gives the distribution of times to the next event. Great. So first of all, let's consider the case of no absorption. So the question we really want to answer here, so if there's, right, so forget the absorption. We're just thinking of resetting. We know if there's no resetting, there's no stationary state. It's just a Gaussian distribution that spreads out. And we've seen that if we have constant rate resetting, then we get the exponentially decaying distribution. So when 
will we get a stationary distribution? What are the conditions on this function r to get a stationary distribution? That's the, the first question. So I'll call stationary state st, st. OK, so um, we could start by trying to do, remember, the renewal approach. Let's try and write down the renewal equation that we used previously. And I'll call that last renewal. So remember, we said the probability of getting to x at time t given x naught. Yeah, and by the way, we're going back, forget the resetting distribution, we're going back to um, resetting to just one position, xr. So we have um, e, and now it becomes e to the capital RT, gd. Okay, the propagator, diffusive propagator for. Um, getting to x in the absence of resetting. So this is just a, a Gaussian. And then if we try to write down in terms of the, the last reset, we would need to average from 0 to t dt primed. And there should be no resetting in the interval t prime to t, so that's fine, e to the minus r t minus t prime. But the problem comes is that we've got to say that there's, there was a reset starting at time 0. There was a reset, not, not the first one, but just a1 at time t primed. And that's actually a bit tricky. That function is Let's call it psi of t prime. You can write an expression for it down, but it's a bit difficult to deal with. It's, it's, it's a bit non-trivial. So this is the prob of reset at um, well, what I call absolute time t prime. Right? So it's the probability of a reset then. There could have been resets before. And that's a little bit tricky to work out. And then we would have had, uh, yeah, then the diffusion then from um, wherever we were. Yeah, so from, um, yeah, we reset to x naught. And then we need to get to x. OK, so that would be the last renewal equation. And that's, as I said, because of this, it's a little bit tricky. So let's write down a different renewal equation. Let's write down the first renewal equation. So the first term will just be the same. Now the second term, let's integrate over dt prime. And t prime now is the time of the first renewal. So we started at t equals 0. t prime is the first renewal, so the first reset. And that we, we know. We know the distribution for the, uh, uh, yeah, for the first reset is given by, by this. So t prime here. It's the time of the first reset. OK, and this derivative would just give me a r of t prime, e to the minus big R t prime. And then, OK, so we reset at t prime, and then it's got to get um, in time t minus t prime from x to 
from x0, the reset position, to x, but there can be resetting, so this is just p x t minus t prime x0. So just to stress here, I should have said no resorption and absorption and resetting to x0. So I've said the initial condition and initial position and the resetting position are the same. Should have stressed that. So this equation is a bit different from what we used before, but this we can deal with, and this is easy to solve. So if I just solve this by the plus transform, as usual, and again, just to stress, I take the Laplace transform. This is a convolution, and so I just um, get an expression for the Laplace transform of this, Laplace, in terms of the Laplace transform of that, then a product, and it becomes a simple solution. And what I find is, if I, if I do that, I get my Laplace transform. I can write, so um, let me write it as x s. OK, and uh, yeah, strictly it should be with the resetting position x0. I write it, and this is a hat. So this is not a Laplace transform I usually denote by tilde. This one is a hat. And that is also h hat. And these things, gd hat, so it's an integral over time, e to the minus st, and in e to the minus capital R t gd. And similarly, h hat Right, so they're just, that's just for completeness. That's, that's what you get. So that's the Laplace transform. Now, usually, um, if there's a stationary state, you get the stationary state by you're looking within the Laplace transform for the term 1 over s. The coefficient of the term 1 over s is the stationary state. So if you don't have a term 1 over s in your expansion, then there's no stationary state. So I can check this out. So the stationary state should be the limit of s goes to 0. s times p tilde, this thing here. So I've written this in a convenient way so that the s's cancel. And so to get something, what I require is um, that this denominator is not 0. So to get this. OK, um, steady state is given by this, and we want it to be non-zero. And what we require is, in fact, that this is integral converges. And so this um, is certainly a sufficient condition. I, OK, I couldn't quite work out this morning whether it's necessary. I, I believe so. But certainly a sufficient condition. So that's one thing. That's to get a stationary state, we need this. So for example, what does that mean? It actually implies that my resetting rate, r of tor, it actually should decay with time more slowly than 1 over tor. So but what I mean by that is that for large tor, 
then assuming R decays monotonically, it should be bigger than 1 over tor. That's what I mean. It's a sort of loose physicist language. So that, that, we say that decays more slowly. And then we get a, a stationary state. OK. So what it means, OK, just to emphasize it, if it, um, if it decays faster than this, then right it, after a certain time, it's very unlikely that you'll get another resetting event. And what this leads to is that you don't get a stationary state. And if it decays more slowly than this, then you always get resetting and you'll get a stationary state. And this is the, the borderline case. OK. So fine, assuming that, um, yeah. Let me go on now and think about what happens when I put now an absorbing. So now consider absorbing target. At a, okay, let's put it at the origin. And um, our resetting position, again, just stress, we put it to be the initial position x naught. Then this renewal equation, we can, remember, we have to put then because we've got absorption, we have to put a survival probability in here, and we integrate over x to get the a renewal equation for the survival probability. It will be the survival probability at time t will be probability of no resetting, and then just the diffusive survival probability. Then we integrate over the first resetting time. We have r t primed, e to the minus r t primed. And then it'll be diffusive I suddenly don't trust my notes. Yes, OK. So um, when we put in the absorbing target, we have a survival probability here up to time t primed. And because t primed is the first resetting, this is just the diffusive survival probability comes in there. So these two terms become this diffusive one for surviving up to t primed. Given the initial position x naught, and then the survival probability with resetting for the next bit t minus t primed. And again, because we've reset to x naught, the initial condition is x naught. And this equation, as usual, we solve by Laplace transform. Okay. Yeah. So that's straightforward to do. I'm not going to write out the solution. Just to save a bit of time, you can see that you'll get um, We'll get an expression for Q tilde. And then we can set S going to 0 
we'll get an expression for the mean time to absorption. So you can believe me, just to save me having to write out the formulas, I'll just go straight to the formula for the mean time to absorption. So mean time to absorption, we get, when we put S goes to zero in Q tilde, And so we get the mean time to absorption starting and resetting from x naught is the following minus 0 to infinity dt e to the minus rt in the diffusive survival probability and over integral from 0 to infinity. And it ends up being d by dt, qd, t, x naught. Right, and I apologize again. I'm very remiss at labeling equations. This should be, for this lecture, equation 9. Anyway, so that's the result. So this is the mean time to absorption with time-dependent resetting rate. And now what I want to just in the, in the last 10 minutes is to discuss trying to optimize this. So again, we would want to try to extremize the mean time to absorption with respect to our resetting rate, RT. And again, we can derive an Euler-Lagrange equation. taking the variation of this with respect to the resetting rate at time t primed, say. OK, if we do that, I will get um, I actually get integral from t primes to infinity dt e to the minus r of t q d t given x naught. And let me call um, this thing here, let me call it k hat of 0 given x naught. So the 0 just means. Uh, yeah, there's no time dependence in there. OK, then um, I get another term, minus, and if I call this thing q hat, this is just to save me writing these out. Yeah, so let me write this as minus, just to be clear, q hat 0 x naught over k hat 0 x naught. So then um, when I do this derivative, OK, that's what I get. I'm going to get over k hat squared. Then I get integral from t prime to infinity dt e to the minus rt dq d by dt. And I want to try and set this equal to 0. And that would give me my optimal 
resetting protocol, if you like, in, in time. Now, unfortunately, you, it's easy to show that there's no solution that holds. You can't solve this. You can't set this equal to 0 for all t primed. Um, and the reason is basically the t prime just appears in the integral. Um, so if this were equal to 0, basically you can take a, OK, so it's a constant. You can take a derivative. You'll get something, an equation that depends on t prime being equal to, uh, OK, you can't solve it for all t prime. You can only solve it for particular values. Let me just tell you that. There's no solution. which holds okay too bad but we have a conjecture for the form of the when i say protocol i just mean time dependence of the resetting function and it's actually quite simple we conjecture that the time dependence that minimizes the mean time to absorption will actually just be a deterministic time dependence, that you have no resetting, and you reset at a fixed time. So in that protocol, for the is that r of t, the resetting rate, equals 0 for t less than some fixed time t star and goes to infinity for t greater than t star. And what that means, so that's a, in equation 10, is in fact is deterministic. resetting. So basically, we just reset after a fixed time t star. And then, OK, you can work it out that if you do this, we can then work out, where's it gone, our mean time to absorption with this. So that was equation 9. So. If we work out equation 9, we'll get t x naught, and the integral will just go up to t star, because r of t becomes infinite for t greater than t star. Um, excuse me, q. 1 minus, that becomes q d t star x naught. And we have, of course, exact expressions for the diffusive survival probability. And I won't give the details, so then you can extremize this, and you get the value of t star that minimizes the uh, mean absorption time. It turns out t star okay, is given by x naught squared over 2d, 3.668. And it leads to t equals 2.671 x naught squared over 2d. So with this protocol of, of deterministic resetting, this is the mean of the best or the, the minimum mean absorption time that you can get. And this is to be compared to um, the best constant rate so remember in the first lecture we looked at uh, okay, optimizing R star and that actually gives T equals 3.088 x naught squared over 2d. 
So clearly this deterministic thing beats that. So why am I writing it in terms of x naught squared over 2d? And that's because if you think about it there, right, if you, knew, if you knew which way the target was, so you're resetting to x naught, and you knew the target was to the left, then the, the best thing if you're diffusing would be whenever you go to the right of x naught is to immediately reset, right, so that you never, you never go in the wrong direction. And then if you, if you were able to do that, so if you basically you knew where the target was and just wanted to diffuse there and not go in the wrong, um, not go past the origin, then that's like a reflecting wall, and that would be the mean absorption time if you use that. So that's why we write it in, in those units. Anyway, so it doesn't matter what the, the numbers are. All, all I'm doing is that numerically you can show that the deterministic resetting beats the best that a constant resetting rate to do. And in fact, what we can show is that 10 is the, what I call a, a local, at least a local optimum. By which I mean that we can show that by varying our resetting rate around this form. OK, we don't get any change if t is greater than t star. That's basically, and that's because we've, there the resetting rate is infinite. And in this region here, if we try to introduce a resetting rate, you, what you can show is that this is greater than 0 to t less than t star. So it's again one of these ones where it looks like the optimal resetting function is at the boundary of the domain, of the allowed domain. Because remember, it can't, the resetting function can't be, rate can't be negative. So here, um, here it's 0. So it's on the boundary of, of that um, non-negative domain. And we would conjecture that that is the optimal resetting rate. But it's not a, a proof. It's just uh, we've checked a few cases, and it seems to be true. OK, and um, I think that's about it. So thank you.